So have you been manipulated? That's the question. Most people say no. You know, the average person you meet is going to tell you they have great common sense, they have powerful intuition, but I was reading in today's book of the day, Everything is Obvious by Duncan J. Watts, uh, how clear it is that you and I have brains that can be manipulated that easily. For example, did you know that if you're at a store and you're buying wine, if there's German music playing, you're more likely to buy German wine. If you're listening to French, or if they have French music playing in the background, you're more li likely to listen to French, uh, you're more likely to buy French wine. If you're given a survey on what's your favorite energy drink, and they give you a marker that's bright green, you're more likely to pick Gatorade. That's how easily the brain that you and I have, and uh, we've all inherited these basic tendencies. There's things like anchoring. For example, um, if you go online to buy a couch on a website, researchers have found you're more likely to buy an expensive couch if the background of the website has fluffy white clouds in it. And if the website has like dollar symbols, cheesy little dollar symbols, you're more likely to buy a low-end budget couch. So marketers know how to manipulate you. Good old town that I live in here. Hollywood knows how to manipulate you. Now, let me be clear on it. Not all manipulation is inherently evil, right? I mean, if you have kids or little brothers, you might not, might manipulate them into eating broccoli by putting cheese on it. That's not, you know, there's levels of black, white, and gray here. But there's a couple points in this book that I think are highly relevant to you and I, or at least they are to me. And uh, if you're like me, they might be interesting. He says that, for example, once you and I agree, and I think most of us agree that people get manipulated, okay, we would, we'll search for some answer. So the answer, let's say, is we need a return to common sense. So he talks about common sense. Let's take a really practical issue. Just imagine uh, if I said to you, you could solve any social problem. Let's say you say poverty. That's a pretty common one. So all these experts come together. They say, we're going to solve poverty. Let me pull up this. It's an interesting chapter. So what do you think has been done in the modern world? What's been done in the last 50 years? How about a lot of money? Billions of dollars have been thrown at housing projects. So he says here, uh, closer to home and over roughly the same period of time, urban planners in the United States have repeatedly set out to solve the problem of urban poverty and have repeatedly failed. So common sense says, how do you solve poverty? Money. Throw money at it, right? Lack of money solved by money. But it's a little bit like physics. Some things are not what they appear. If you put a straw into a, a, a river or a stream and you look at it, the, street, the, the straw appears broken. Physics presents us with optical illusions that show common sense is not always what we need. So there is a wistful myth that if only we had enough money to spend, the figure is usually put at $100 billion, we could wipe out all the slums in the, in the United States in 10 years. But look at what we have built with the first several billion dollars. Low-income projects that have generally become worse centers of delinquency, vandalism, and general social hopelessness than the slums that they were supposed to replace, meaning common sense did not work. It would have been better to not spend a penny. The slums were better than, you know, these housing projects. I was born in Long Beach. Um, if you've ever been to Long Beach, there's some parts that are just, you know... These projects have been in New York City. My family's, my sister lives in the Bronx. There's parts there. It's just like they've created what common sense would have dictated was the solution, but they've created more of a problem. They've created what they say. Uh, sociologist Sudhir Venkatesh described an American project. What started out as a high-minded and carefully thought out plan to help inner cities families rise up into the middle class became a debacle of dilapidated buildings, overcrowded apartments and playgrounds, concentrated poverty, and eventually gang violence. So we're not, that's not what my point of this talk is not to talk about how we can solve global problems. It's just to illustrate that every day you're presented with a myriad of decisions that you have to make. And if your only solution to those is going by your gut and what appears to be common sense, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. 
Uh, he says here, the failures in politics, business, and marketing. Bad things happen to us, not because we forget to use our common sense, but rather because of the incredible effectiveness of common sense. I'm sorry, the, the incredible uh, the incredible effectiveness of common sense in solving the problems of everyday life causes us to put more faith in it than it can bear. So in everyday life, common sense helps you. Simple problems. You know, it's like, should I eat off a dirty uh, spoon or a clean spoon? Common sense is the amalgamation of of handed down traditions some of them why some of them not but you know your mom told you eat with you know wash your hands before you eat so now common sense remember hundreds of years ago common sense had did not dictate you needed to wash your hands doctors were able to <laughs> doctors would go from the morgue where they were putting their hands in dead bodies autopsies and immediately go and deliver babies and they couldn't figure out why babies were dying why infant mortality was so high because common sense at that point had not stumbled upon the concept of invisible germs but you and I like I said if you have a dirty fork or a, or a clean fork common sense quote unquote but now what about problems that your parents couldn't pass on to you the answers to there's most problems if you're trying to run a business now if you're trying to become an entrepreneur were you raised by parents and grandparents who were able to be effective entrepreneurs themselves and able to pass on to you all of these skills? No. You know, the thing that gets me about politics, while I'm not political at all, is it's a bunch of dilettantes, amateurs, people who don't know what they're talking about, always acting from what they feel is common sense. So ask anybody you know a political question. Should you raise taxes or lower taxes? Well, once again, the argument for raising taxes is you raise taxes and you're able to redistribute wealth at some level. You're able to fund things that wouldn't normally be fund, funded. You know, the tragedy of the commons. Nobody will take care of the commons without uh, uh, taxes. But on the flip side, there's an equally coherent and well thought out, quote unquote, common sense answer that says, oh, well, no, the actual solution is lower taxes because then you free up and release the burden uh, from business owners to go out and raise the general GDP, the general economy level, uh, economy's level. So the answer in general is not found just in common sense. And the thing that's mitigating against your brain and my brain that's fighting against us almost at every moment is these 25 cognitive biases, these 100 plus uh, vi uh, illogical fallacies that we have, whether it's red herring or, you know, straw man or arguing ad, uh, ad hominem, all these kind of things. Uh, he says here, he has his little list. I'm not sure how he came up with this short list, you know, things like anchoring and so on, priming, framing, anchoring, availability, motivated reasoning, loss aversion, and so on. So those are things, of course, going back to what I originally said, have you been manipulated? You know, loss aversion. Are you doing something now simply because you're afraid of losing it, even though you see this in relationships, people stay in horrible relationships and you ask them why you're like, well, I don't want to be alone. What they're saying is they don't want to lose the relationship they have. But then you say, do you like the relationship? No, I hate it. So they're not making quote unquote common sense decisions. Um, and in that case, they're not making effective decisions. And you won't either, and I won't either, unless we understand, no, my brain is manipulated, not only by the outside forces like the media, but also just by its instinctual patterns that evolved in a world thousands and tens of thousands of years ago, thousands of generations ago. Your brain, your great-great-great-grandmother's brain had common sense, but that common sense only worked in a village, in a hut where they were hunting and gathering, it doesn't work in a world of 7.3 billion people. So be very careful of just living off your common sense. Check out this book, Everything is Obvious. And, and I would just add to that, the practical takeaway that I take from these kind of books is that know that you're going to have to, over life, over your lifetime, realize this is outside of my intuition. This is outside of my common sense. You know, if you get sick enough, you're not going to operate 
and do heart surgery on your on your own. You're going to need somebody who's trained. And so the only way that you can fight against the 25 cognitive bias, the only way you can fight against loss aversion, or the only way you could fight against your tendency to use common sense when common sense isn't called for is for you to train. Train your brain. It's And people go, ah, what do you mean, Ty? And I'm like, well, here in Hollywood and around the world now, I would I don't know what percentage of people go to gyms, but it's a lot of people. And what do you do? You do repetition, you put some resistance on you, you do your sit-ups, you do your uh your bench press, you do your squats, you're resisting, you're training, and every day your body's rebuilding a little bit stronger. You have to do the same thing with your brain. You gotta go, okay, let me when I feel myself suffering from loss aversion, that's what this author calls it, and cognitive bias as you would call it, um, deprival, super complex. So periodically train yourself by just depriving yourself of something. So let's say you're freaked out about uh, not having, not being able to pay your car bill. That's an example. Sell your car. Prove to yourself that it's not so bad to be deprived of the car. Common sense says, uh, well, it depends on the common sense. Some people's common sense is like what I just said. They'd be like, who cares? You can walk, you can carpool. In fact, I did this. You know, people see I have Lamborghini and Ferrari and all this stuff. But um, even last year, I had a couple years ago on Halloween, I just made a split second decision. I wanted to take control of my brain and I didn't want to operate from loss aversion being like, oh, what happens if I lose my, what happens? What happens if I don't have a car? What happens if I don't have a nice car? I just sold my cars. Not because I couldn't afford them. I had a Maserati before. I just was like, I'm going to get rid of it. I don't want to get it too attached to a material thing. I sold the Maserati and I went exactly two years, almost to the day, just to train my brain to not succumb to these cognitive biases. So find something like that for yourself. It can be food. It can be money. It doesn't have to be loss aversion either. I don't have time to get in all the cognitive biases. If you're in the 67 steps or some of the business stuff that I do, I devote long periods of time. I mean, it's kind of like somebody saying, hey, I want to train. I'm 500 pounds overweight. Can you fix me, my body overnight? Any personal trainer is going to be like, that's not possible. So when it comes to your brain, comes the question of the common sense, not being manipulated, being in control of your life. It's not something you could just grab one book. Each of these books are a little signal, a little hint, pushing me toward a little closer to what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, about myself and improve my own life, you find some exercise. And and so some common suggestions if you can't think of anyone, like I said, loss aversion is real problem in the world. People are overcome by fear. So take something you're afraid of and purposely make it happen, right? So if you, now don't do this if you have kids or whatever, but let's say you're all alone, you know, you're on your own and no one relies on you and you're always afraid of quitting a job and starting your own thing, just quit your job just to quit it. Just to see that tomorrow when you wake up, you'll be all right. If you're living in most countries in the world, you're not gonna starve to death. You'll be a-okay, you trust me, a year from now. Now, it might be a little bumps in the road. Like I said, don't do this if other people rely on you, but there you are, training the brain to overcome fear. Like Alexander the Great said in that great, great quote, you know, there's only two types of people in this world he talked about. He talked about the type of people that overcome their fear. And then he talked about everyone else in the world. And those other people, he said, they either conquer their fear or they suffer and die. And uh, so that's one, risk aversion. Another very common one uh, is <clears throat> the, and I'll, out of the 25, I'm gonna pick one randomly to share. The liking and disliking bias. Um, this one's a real problem. In this book, he calls it something else. He called it, uh, uh, I don't know which one he called it. Maybe he actually didn't talk about it, but it's arguing logical fallacy, arguing ad hominem. Do not judge the messages that you receive in your, into your brain in terms of what you value, what you believe about politics, life, food, all this, uh, by whether you like the person saying them. So let's say your mom and dad and your grandma, you probably really like them. It doesn't mean they're right. Okay. And generally, uh, we disbelieve 
things from people we don't like their style sometimes people are like hey ty one guy wrote he's like i don't like your style that sometimes you point into the camera he's probably right you know politicians say you should put your thumb like this and i was thinking okay that's a valid point but not really you've been manipulated by your mind into forgetting you should judge what i say on the relevance to your life who cares if i point but again we have weak minds, easy, easily manipulated. And that's why politicians who don't point and go like this get elected more than ones that point. Do you really think that's a rational way to elect officials that are going <laughs> to dictate important areas of life? But no. So that's another one. Start getting in the habit. Start seeking out the advice of people you don't even like their style. And stop listening to people just because they make you feel good. That, like I said, is... Uh, some, you know, are the liking disliking bias and logical fallacy. They call it arguing ad hominem, meaning you argue against the person. You go, well, oh, that guy's an idiot. Why he wears a red shirt? You know, irrelevant. And there's lots of these. The logical fallacies go on and on. Just like if you go to a gym, there's lots of different exercises. You know, you go in some gyms, there's hundred machines. Some do the inside of your thighs. Some do your delts, your lats. All these little specialized. Some do one part of your bicep muscle and it's the same with the brain you got to hone that thing because if you do the upside is so big you will be like a superhero in this world while the rest of the world is scrambling and being manipulated by their own brain and outside forces you'll be able to bring sense real common sense so my takeaway from this book is that common sense is not common it's trained you're it's not there's some inborn common sense when it comes to things like don't run at a, you know, don't pet a dog that's barking and snarling and, you know, got rabies. That's common sense. But outside of those things, those tools you really need in life, most of your common sense is going to uh, is going to militate against your happiness. So take back the control. Think about how you think. Think about why you think. Pick up some books on the stuff. If you're in the 67 Steps of the Business Program, Go back through the stuff I talk about on the brain. I mean, 67 steps is mostly about these kind of things. But really, it's always say to yourself that ancient Chinese saying, give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Just swap out one word. Give a man a good thought. You know, you see all these little memes on Instagram and Twitter, and I'm guilty of posting those. You know, but my intention is not to give somebody a little quote. Teach yourself to come up with the quotes yourself. And that comes through training, training, not inborn. Now it might be latent deep inside you, but I, I was talking to George Mumford, Michael Jordan's uh, uh, psychologist, the guy that got Michael Jordan, you know, around the time when Jordan won all the NBA championships. And I had him on the phone. I was at the bank down on Sunset Boulevard and I was trying to talk to him and drive home or, or get in the car and drive home. And he said, I said, George, what have you learned at working with all these pro athletes? He, he works for the New York Knicks now and, and Phil Jackson. He said, I've learned that deep down, it's a little bit like Michelangelo, the great, uh, the great artist said that, you know, someone said, how do you do these great masterpieces to Michelangelo? Michelangelo said, I just chip away until the beautiful sculpture is all that's left. And so if you're one of those kind of people that says, no, Ty, the answer really is within, and that's fine. Let's not argue over semantics. That's another logical fallacy. Let's, argue, let's uh, agree on one thing. It will take training to bring out the best in you. you every one uh, everyone of, of uh, every person at a gym, fat or skinny, underneath that fat has abs. They just haven't trained them to show up. They haven't eaten right. They haven't worked out right. So I agree. Deep down, we probably do have the answers. There's just too much manipulate, manipulative layers that have been layered onto us. And the complexity of the modern world adds to that problem. So there's a way out. And it's not as hard as people think. It comes much quicker than people think in my experience. Uh, thinking and learning how to think. You know, some practical things. Play some chess. Play some different games. There's a lot of science that the brain needs to be exercised. That's why people who play games 
uh, are less likely to get Alzheimer. The brain is, it's kind of like a muscle. It's obviously not a muscle per se, but it's a, it's an organ that needs to be utilized and pushed and strained. Play some chess, play bridge. I read a book on uh, billionaires by Fridson, I think is his name, years ago, and he said almost every highly successful person he ever <clears throat> studied, whether it was Hunt, the oil man, or Warren Buffett, uh, they played games, and, and relatively complex games, not just like, you know, video games people love, but like games of, of where you had to push your memory, you had to push deep thought like chess, multiple multivariate factoring. And so anyway, uh, I hope that you and I can end up living a life where it's on our terms, where it's not manipulated uh, internally or externally. And if you can do that, you'll find the good life, okay? So, talk to you tomorrow. Oh, one quick question. What's an example in your life where uh, you have been manipulated by thinking just using quote unquote common sense? A relationship you got stuck in. By the way, food is one of those. Food that tastes good, it seems like it should be healthy. It's like, ooh, an Oreo. That seems your senses are going good, good for you, good for you, good for you, good for you. But the truth of the matter is more complex. You've been manipulated with the sugar. Video games, people try to argue they're good for you. And I'm sure video games have some benefit, but not as much as people think. <laughs> if you use, if you understand opportunity cost. So maybe that's your thing. Relationships. It seems to be common sense. That if you're in a relationship with somebody and it's going and it's okay, you shouldn't leave them because, you know, the fear that you can't find anyone better. It seems that way, but in a world of 7.3 7 billion people, you'll probably find somebody and probably find somebody who's a better match for you. So, like, what's your thing? Oh, depression. You know, people get depressed because they rely on common sense. They go, oh, I'll die. Well, you know, there's what's the point of life? We're all just this. And I go, well. Or they say, um, I'm always happy. That's their common sense. That's not true either. The truth of it, the non-common sense, is that happiness is an emotion. And emotions are meant for purposes. Anger is meant for you to exhibit, to tell other people to leave you alone. Happiness was meant to reward you so that you continue to do whatever it is that gave you that happiness. Depression exists it's a functional if you ask a, a psychologist or a biologist someone like dr david bus depression in great part exists to say uh-uh no no stop doing that i was reading that book uh, that i talked about earlier by a susan pinker the the uh, village effect and she's like loneliness exists because there was a time where being alone was increased your likelihood you were getting eaten by lions and tigers and bears and so loneliness is like, you need people to survive. And so be motivated by those internal things that you have, but don't be manipulated by them. What's an example of an area you realize you've been manipulated in? Friends, health, food, business, fear, happiness, depression. What's yours? And what's something you can do to train yourself out of that? All right? Subscribe here to get all my newest stuff. And uh, check out tylopez.com. You can join my book of the day. I'm writing. You can see my written uh, article on this too on my website and also um, uh, on my book of the day email. So make sure you get those. Check out 67 Steps and uh, all kinds of good stuff. So talk to you tomorrow.